Hello CS peers. I wanted to take a few minutes and do a little bit of review and just further discussion on the HTML and CSS document that you started yesterday as we started designing web pages. So we've talked about the internet and how packets travel and some of the infrastructure that's involved. Well, probably a large portion, and I wouldn't know how much, but obviously a large portion of the traffic traveling over that internet are web pages. And the two primary languages of those pages are HTML and CSS. So we're going to get introduced to that here, and you started yesterday. A couple things I want to highlight for you. Uh, if it says here at the beginning of the be, uh, yeah at the bottom of the beginning paragraph here, if you want to develop more elegant websites using web design application, you'll need to know HTML and CSS. And if you take a look here at what this thing is talking about, you could go to W3 Schools, which is run by the World Wide Web. That's what W3 stands for, World Wide Web Consortium, and they got everything you would need to know about designing web pages. And I happen to have a link here. So this is W3Schools.com homepage. They got all the tutorials you'd ever want and examples and interactive uh, displays that you can try things through HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Those are the three major lang languages of the web, plus a whole many, many, many more languages. But it's a very, very reputable source. These are the folks that really oversee the conventions that make the web work. And one of the main gentlemen involved here is... Um, uh, Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the World Wide Web. So anyway, that's a very good source for you to always go back and look for things when you want to try stuff out. Um, just do a Google search for something you want to do in HTML or CSS, and many times it'll take you right to a link on W3Schools. Okay, so anyway, moving down the page here a little bit. Um, it says you'll be working in shared workspace that permits four hands programming. That means multiple people can be working at the same time. I only want you to share this website, or I'm sorry, th this workspace in Cloud9 with me. So I put a little note here. Um, if you do that, share the workspace with me. Uh, my email address when you invite me to share is r underscore Myers at easdpa.org. That way I'd be able to get in and troubleshoot any of the code that you might want me to look at. Okay, So that's how you just share it with me. You don't need to share it with anybody else. So we're going to be developing this in Cloud9, which is new for me. Uh, I've always done it in another program, Notepad++. Um, but right in the very beginning, remember they had us put some of this uh, pre-laid out code in our Cloud9 file and preview it. Okay, um, Down below it says, unlike Python, a browser reading HTML does not care about white space. But you see how nice and organized this file is, and that's because humans can read it a whole lot easier and debug it a whole lot easier. Just like Python, there's going to be plenty of things that go wrong here with our text-based languages, and we'll need to debug it. And so having the indentations and white space really help. You may remember from yesterday that I had one uh, file open. That, the browser will read that perfectly. The browser doesn't care about white space, but if we had lines and lines of code that was jammed together like this, it would be really hard for us to interpret as humans what's going on, as opposed to if we look at this one, which is nice and neatly organized. And if I look at this, I can see there's an HTML tag. So let's talk a little bit about this while we're looking at it. Everything inside the left and right arrows, or the less than or greater than signs, are tags. And this first tag, which you only see one time, tells the browser that we're using HTML version 5. The next one starts the HTML element, and it has an opening tag with HTML, and down at the very bottom, it has a slash in front of the HTML, which means it's a closing tag. And everything in between there is part of the HTML element. Inside the HTML element are two like children that are of the same weight, the head section, and the body section. And the way this is laid out neatly is that you can see here's the opening head, the closing head, and on the same indentation level is the body tag, which opens the body and closes the body. Things inside the head section tell what the page is sort of going to look like. Down in the body section is what you actually are going to see. And if we go to our document, and if I scroll down here a little bit, 
they have this graphic which shows here's the main element it has two basically children that are even the head and the body section in the head section you have things like the title and all the meta tags and sometimes CSS to tell it what the page looks like in the body tag are things you actually see like tables of, of data of headings and text and this one breaks it down all the way to see where the number one and the and the word vanilla come through when we actually render this page in a second and you can see if you follow the path they are all part of the body section of the page all right so let's go back here to our document in a second uh, yeah where do I want to go here we go okay so if you look in here everything is designated by tags this says start the body this says start an h1 and H1 stands for heading one, which means it's the largest heading. Uh, H1s, it, it runs through headings, run through H1 through H6, progressively getting smaller. So think about a newspaper. The first heading you see is the biggest heading, the headline. Then there's subheadings under that. Now you can make fonts any size you want, but H1 through H6 are quick defaults that you can make text show up at certain sizes, relatively speaking to each other, without having to worry about a point size or a font. Then we start a table. Now the table can be a little confusing. Uh, and the best way I thought to explain how a table works is by looking at a Word document. So here have a blank Word document. I'm going to insert a table, which you've all done probably many times. And you know when you come down here, you say if I'm down here I have right now a table that's one row tall and one column wide. And if I pull down I get more and more rows every one of those is a row and if I go across every one of those blocks across is a new cell or in the words of HTML a new table data so when we think of table rows we're talking about going down when we think about table data we're going across so if we go back and look now at our HTML I start a table and then I have a row and inside that row I have something called a TH which is a table heading which simply means this is like a, a cell we saw in the Word document but it's going to the contents are going to be bold and this table heading has the word rank and then we close the table heading that means this TH to closing TH is the first cell of the table then we have another cell in that row and this one has flavor and it's going to be bold because it's a table heading and then we close the row so what we have here is a row with two cells in it and then we close the row and just like in Word we move down to the next row now the next row has a table data which is another cell it's just that the contents will not be bold by default and they won't be centered it has the text in of one then we close that table data then we open a new table data and we put in the word vanilla then we close that table data we close the row and we do we'll go down to the next row so you can see how this is laid out Every one of the TRs starts a new row. Every TH or TD starts a new cell moving across the page. And you have to always open and close them. And finally, at the end, we close the table. So if you want to see what that looks like, we saw yesterday, you can right-click on the, the file and hit Preview. And that's what it looks like. And it's pretty plain vanilla right now. But we have a heading at the top. There's your H1 because it's big. And here's our table. Here's our THs. They're bold and they're centered in their in their uh, columns. And then we have for all of our table data. So there's the one, the vanilla, the two, the strawberry. They are in their table data, but they're not centered. Now that's one way to look at it uh, by hitting the preview button. You can also run the file from up above here like we run other ones. And when you do that, it launches the Apache server down here at the bottom. It says starting Apache, and that's the name of a type of web server. And it gives you a web address. And what I found is I have to click actually down here in this window. But when I do that, this web address becomes active. And I can click on it and say open. And now it is actually opening the web page you've created. You're going to see your username up here in the web address. And this is now on the web. This could be viewed from anywhere if someone had this address. You can see you have the, the protocol in the beginning. Then you have the path of where it is at. Uh, you have the domain name, the I.O. And finally, you have the actual document itself, the 214.html. So that's how it actually would look on the web at this point in time. So, we're going to go back to our document quickly and see what I've forgotten about.
Okay, so you're going to fill in these charts. You can do that right on this document if you would like. I'm not sure how I'm going to have you turn this stuff in yet, but just you can fill those in there. Or if you've already started it in a Word document, that would be fine too. Now, if I scroll down here a little bit, you're going to put a picture of a cookie on here. And it says, save the modified HTML and refresh in the browser. You should see an image of cookies. And I add a little note. I would like a screenshot of your code and a screenshot of the preview of your web page here. So I ought to see the code that's making this thing work and I ought to see a screenshot of your um, uh, actual web page as it's being uh, placed in there too. So I guess that we would definitely have to copy and put into a, an, a Word document to be able to see that. All right, so that would go there. And I want to take a moment here and talk about this cookie thing. So if I'm going to come back here to my uh, this page right here, and it says go search for some cookies. So I'm going to open up a browser. I'm going to look for cookies. And I want some images. And there they are. All right. Well, first thing you can see is I hover over them, you see what size they are. I'm going to get a really big picture of cookies right here. I'm going to click on this. It's a thousand. 11, almost 1200 pixels wide. I'm going to right click. I'm going to save this image as cookies into my correct folder and I'm going to call this uh, good looking cookies. All right, so now that's in my folder. So now if I come back to here, I'm going to upload it. So I'm going to make sure I'm in my main folder. I'm going to do a file, upload. And I'm going to navigate to find that those cookies. And I, what did I call them? I called them good looking cookies. I upload them. Now they're showing up right there. And then they're going to have you put the code in to make those show up. Not hard to do. I'm just going to put it in here real quick. It's called the image tag. So it begins with the left arrow image. Then I designate the source. And the syntax is equal followed by the quote. And I called it good looking cookies.jpg and you definitely need to file type at the end whether it's a jpeg a ping or a jfif and i put it like that and okay and now i'm going to do my preview of this thing preview and i have one tremendously huge picture of a cookie not what i want on my web page so i can change the code by going back in here and coming down and adding an attribute inside the image tag so it's inside the right arrow and I'm going to put width equals quote and I'm just going to try 200 that would stand for pixels and now if I click over to the preview you can see my image has gotten much smaller we're going to talk about the pros and cons of adding pictures like that down the road but hopefully it gets you caught up and everybody's to that point today so you should have those cookies in they should look small like that and we'll continue on with the document. Let's see if I have anything else I wanted you to put on there for today. Where am I at? Okay. Here also I say on number 12 that I would like you to uh, answer this question. And if I scroll down, number 15, I ask here, I say place a screenshot of your folder structure here. Be sure to have the images folder open so the cookie file is visible. Right. And down here I have a style sheets let you apply a variety of visual effects. And let's just take one second and talk about cascading style sheets or CSS. They are the format of the page. They're what make it look good. HTML, which we've done up to this point up above by putting the cookies in the table, is for content, words, pictures. But it, we could see it didn't look very nice. Now that you start adding CSS to it, you're going to start making things look a whole lot better. So CSS is for formatting, HTML is for content. And that's where we're going to stop for this video right now.